Good day everyone, this is Teresa Gwinnett Maranan and I'm going to have a poem analysis today, Water by Robert Lowell Jr. So before we begin to the poem analysis itself, let's now have a simple background of the author. Robert Trail Spence jo Lowell Jr. Born on March 1, 1917 until September 12, 1977. He was an American poet known for his complex autobiographical poetry, a Pulitzer Prize winning poet, and his poetry was widely known as individualistic and intense, rich in symbolism, and marked by great technical skill. Lowell was born with a family who loves poetry. James Russell Lowell was his great grand uncle. He is an American poet, critic, essayist, editor and diplomat who helped develop the literature in the U.S. Amy, Percival, and A. Lawrence Lowell were his distant cousins. A. Lawrence Lowell was an American lawyer, educator, and was the president of the Harvard University. So, Robert attended the Harvard University but after falling under the influence of the Southern Formalist School of Poetry, he transferred to Kenyon College in Gumber, Ohio, where he studied with John Crow Ransom, a leading exponent of fugitives, and began a lifelong friendship with Randall Jarrell, who's also an American poet, novelist, and critic. During World War II, Lowell was sentenced for consensus objection, an objection for reasons of conscience to complying with a particular requirement, especially in the armed forces. He served five months of sentence, which resulted to his poem In the Cage from Lord Wery's Castle in 1946. It is his collection of poems in 1946 and was awarded Pulitzer Prize in 1947. A Pulitzer Prize is a prize for outstanding public service and achievement in American journalism, letters, and music. His first volume of poems, Land of Unlikeness, in 1944, deals with a world in crisis and the hunger for spiritual security. It consists of his two most praised poems, The Quaker Graveyard in Nantucket and Colloquy in Black Rock. The Quaker Graveyard in Nantucket, an elegy to his cousin who lost at sea during the World War II, and Colloquy in Black Rock, um, celebrating the feast of Corpus Christi. In 1947, he was named Poetry Consultant to Library of Congress, a position he held for one year. In 1951, he published a book of dramatic monologues, Meals of Cavanus. In 1959, his life studies won the National Book Award for Poetry. It contains an autobiographical essay, 91 Reverse Street, as well as a series of 15 confessional poems, Waking in Blue and Skunk R. Um, Waking in Blue, which tells of his confinement in a mental hospital, and Skunk R, which conveys his mental turmoil with dramatic intensity. In 1960, his activities in the civil rights and anti-war campaigns lent a more public note to his next three books of poetry, For the Union Dead in 1964, Near the Ocean in 1967, and The Notebook in 1967 to 1968, which was published during 1969. In 1965, The Old Glory, Lowell's tri Trilogy of Plays, which views American culture over the span of history. His later poetry volumes include The Dolphin in 1973, which won him a second Pulitzer Prize, and Day by Day in 1977. His translations include Paedra in 1963, Prometheus Bound in 1969, Imitations in 1961, Free Renderings of Various European Poets, and The Voyage and Other Versions of Poems by Boulder Baldelirar in 1968. So, Lowell's marriage life. He was married three times during his life. His first wife was the novelist Jean Stafford and converted himself temporarily to Roman Catholic in 1940. 
In 1948, Lowell married the writer and critic Elizabeth Hardwick and divorced in 1972. And with the same year, he married his third wife, the Irish journalist and novelist Lady Caroline Backwood. Robert Lowell served as a chancellor of the Academy of American Poets from 1962 until his death. So in his poetry, Lowell expressed the major tensions of both public and private of his time and with technical mystery and hunting authenticity. His earlier poems convey a view of the world whose nakedness is relieved by a religious mythicism compounded as much of doubt as of faith. However, uh, most of his poetry was still composed in a more relaxed and conversational manner. So, Robert Lowell served as a chancellor of the Academy of American Poets from 1962 until his death, where he continued to develop his works eh, with sometimes uneven results, all along defining the restless center of American poetry until his sudden death on September 12, 1977, from a heart attack at the age of 60. So, this is the copy of the poem Water. It was a main lobster town, each morning boatloads of hands, pushed off for granite, quarries on the islands, and left dozens of bleak, white frame houses stuck like oyster shells on a hill of rock. And below us, the sea lap, the raw little match stick, mises of a weir, where the fish for bait were trapped. Remember, we sat on a slab of rock, from this distance in time, it seems the color of iris rotting and turning purpler. But it was only the usual gray rock turning the usual green when drenched by the sea. The sea drenched the rock at our feet all day and kept tearing away flake after flake. One night you dreamed you were a mermaid clinging to a wharf pile and trying to pull off the barnacles with your hands. We wished our two souls might return like gulls to the rock in the end. The water was too cold for us. The background of the poem is that he is describing a long gun relationship. He wished he nev he wished it never ended. Describing a coastline with a fragile buildings, possibly the place the two used to live, not necessarily together, but in the same time or same town, or a place he can't get out of, hence the praise white frame houses talk like oyster shells on a hill of rock. So the reason why Lowell wrote the water was because he had an erratic life, suffering from manic depression and three difficult marriages. And one of his few stable relationships was with his friend, Elizabeth Bishop, not his second wife, just with the same name, Elizabeth. They were really close and began having something between them. However, they didn't see each other often because they both traveled so much because of their life and works, but they kept in touch through letters. And Lowell loved Elizabeth poetries so much. And because of this, since they were far from each other, the poem Water was all about the long gun relationship they had. So, we're going to have an analysis by, by stanza. So, in the first stanza, he uses an imagery uh, which includes figurative and metaphorical language to improve the reader's experience through their senses. So, Lobster Town, as we imagine the place, it is located in Maine, a small coastal fishing town. Uh, while in the second stanza, he used simile, a literary term where you use like or as to compare two different things and show a common quality between them. He used this in like oyster shells on a hill of rock. Like the way oyster attach themselves to the way the houses are placed, their houses are placed. Um, he used this an comparison of workers leaving their plain white houses each morning when they go to work. In the third stanza, um, Lowell made us assume that this view is from the ship. And below the ship, on the way to work of the calm sea, gently hits the side of the vessel as they get through the maze of wares, 
which cannot be passed quickly because the wake may disrupt the wares and wares can be used to regulate sea level and or trap fish. Um, so in the fourth stanza, this is the part in the poem where it turns into a memory of a relationship he used to have, one that he dearly misses. He sees the rock him and his girlfriend used to sit on. Others may see the rock and think nothing of it, but for him, of course, it is special and he sees it... Um, it has an individual colors of the rock which remind him fond memories. With just simple rock, he remembers so many things, especially his relationship with Elizabeth. In the fifth stanza, um, this is him realizing that in fact the rock was just a rock now. It holds memories, but it's nothing more than a rock that he must forget about it and come back to reality because the past is gone. So slowly in the poem, until the end it was getting sadder and sadder. Um, so in the sixth stanza, it has to do again with the past. The hidden meaning in this stanza is that the rock was deteriorating flake by flake. Just his relationship was little by little until it was no more. Then in the seventh stanza, this is in the perspective of his girlfriend, or rather his dearest friend Elizabeth. She had a dream. She was a mermaid trying to pry the barnacles from the pier with her bare hands. And may mer mermaids are thought of as beautiful but delicate creatures. This most likely means that she tried salvaging her relationship with him but failed because she wasn't strong enough to take him with her. Maybe he didn't want to live like the Bernakel and the Peer. And lastly, in the eighth stanza is the conclusion of their relationship. This may have been a long distance relationship or a reason that she had to leave the town for college, perhaps given to the line might return like gulls. The poem finishes off with the line, the water was too cold for us, which signals that their initial goodbye wish to come back to the rock in the end did not happen. So, all in all, the poetic devices he used was this. Without rhyme scheme, it is without the rhyme scheme based almost solely on creating an image in our minds like the imagery he used in the first stanza all in all this poem was uh, needed an a wide imagination the small lobster in town in may the iris rock turning purple white frame houses when drenched by the sea mermaid clinging to a wharf pile are all images the reader intends to give um, so Robert also appeals to our senses by using lines like trying to pull off the barnacles with your hands like when we imagine it, we can also feel it. In the end, water was too cold for us are all examples where as you read the poem, you get the sense of what it would feel like. So that's it. And for more information, these are the references I used for my poem analysis. Um, Britannica and Prezi, which is also a presentation about the water. That's all. Thank you.